In our next lesson on how enzymes work from Chapter 6, we want to consider substrate specificity. In other words, how do enzymes with similar catalytic mechanisms that catalyze the same type of chemical reaction recognize different substrates? Even the tertiary structure may be very similar. We're going to consider in particular the case of chymotrypsin, trypsin, and elastase. They all catalyze the same reaction, hydrolysis of a peptide bond, and in fact their structures are very similar as illustrated by the backbone trace at the bottom of the slide here. Chymotrypsin is highlighted in blue, trypsin in green, and elastase in red. As you can see, very similar. Those active site residues are highlighted by the black oval and as you can see they practically overlap one another. So practically identical tertiary structure and the same catalytic mechanism and yet they recognize different substrates. We find also that there may be enzymes that have a different tertiary structure and yet the active site residues are the same. That is true for cytolysin pictured in the gray trace on the left. As you can see a very different structure from chymotrypsin, trypsin, and elastase and yet the active site residues are the same. So in this case a different tertiary structure but the active site the same. How can this work? Well Enzymes can vary in the specificity pocket, at least in the case of these three enzymes. In other words, they vary in the amino acids that form that pocket. It controls the chemical environment as well as the dimensions of that pocket, that is the amino acid residues that comprise that pocket. Let's look first at the example of chymotrypsin, and that's part of our illustration here. The specificity pocket has been outlined for us in red. As you can see, there are glycine residues on the sides of that pocket. And of course, glycine is the smallest amino acid, and that gives us the largest dimensions on the pocket. That allows us to accommodate large aromatic rings, such as phenylalanine. You'll notice this is that there's a serine residue at the bottom of the pocket, and although serine is a polar amino acid side chain, yet there's no charge there so as to repel the very nonpolar phenylalanine side chain. Let's next look at the relationship between the specificity pocket and the active site. Here we have the phenylalanine side chain fitting nicely in our specificity pocket. Here's the sisal bond, the one that's going to fit in the active site to be hydrolyzed. So the side chain sits in the pocket and that perfectly positions that sisal bond in the active site. In other words, the specific specificity pocket is different than the active site but adjacent to it. Let's next look at trypsin. In this case, the pocket has the same dimensions because there are glycine side chains that outline that pocket, but there's a different side chain at the bottom of the pocket. In this case, it's aspartate, and of course, at physiological pH, that would carry a negative charge. So the dimensions of the pocket can accommodate a bulky group, but with that negative charge, it will no longer bind a nonpolar residue such as phenylalanine. Instead, it's more likely to bind a bulky basic residue such as lysine or arginine. And again, that sisal bond is right here, perfectly positioned within that active site. Lastly, we have elastase. There are bulkier hydrophobic groups on the walls of the pocket and that minimizes the dimensions. The pocket is smaller and so it accommodates small nonpolar side chains. So you can see it's the difference in those specificity pockets that determines the side chains that fit into the pocket and therefore the peptide bonds that are hydrolyzed within the active site. In our next video lesson, we want to look at some other effects of enzymes and see how a conformational change in an enzyme can accelerate catalysis.